Truth be told, not many games arrived on Mac in 2019, but the ones we have are floppin' fantastic. So with that, today I present my top 10 new Mac games of 2019. And remember, this is my personal list. Starting at number 10, we have Phoenix Point. Snapshot Games, the people behind the XCOM series, recently released their new turn-based strategy experience to Mac computers at the same time as the Windows version. It all takes place on Earth, in the middle of a battle between humans and a mutating alien menace. The game is similar to XCOM, but also brings new gameplay elements. For example, aliens will mutate or change their strategy in response to your tactics. So if you fire at an individual part of a body, the enemy will modify themselves accordingly. Also, when you shoot at parts of their body, you can disable their shield, weapon, or ability. Phoenix Point is available on the Epic Games Store. It will also come to Steam in late 2020 or early 2021. Also, Phoenix Point is best played on 15-inch MacBook Pros released since 2017, 16-inch MacBook Pros released since 2019, and an iMac from 2017 and up. <laughs> Number 9 is Ultimate Rivals The Rink. You know what sucks? There are hardly any quality sports games on Mac nowadays. Ultimate Rivals The Rink is a solution to this problem. It is a sci-fi hockey game that brings over 50 athletes from hockey, basketball, baseball, football and soccer. Matches involve special abilities, which can help to get an advantage over your opposing team. The game is available on all other Apple devices, but plays best and looks the best on a Mac. You also have access to the graphics settings menu, which is only on a Mac. Here, you can manually change the game's resolution and more advanced graphics options too. Plus, you can play above 60 frames if your Mac is powerful enough, and if you have an external monitor with a high refresh rate above 60. Ultimate Rivals The Rink is available to download if you're subscribed to Apple Arcade. Also, it is supported on all Macs back to 2012. Number 8, we have After Party. Here, you control dead characters, Milo and Lola. Following their untimely death, both have wrongly gone down to spend an eternity in hell. To get back to Earth, you have to find Satan and beat him in a drinking game. After Party features a conversation system that is presented in a text message style. Depending on the lines of conversation you choose, this can alter the story and the relationship you form with characters. After Party has fantastic writing and does well with comedic timing and representing dread and panic. To add on, I was taken by the game's really striking neon visuals. It definitely portrays the dark aspects of hell. But at the same time, if I can say this, it shows the beauty, at least for this version of hell. After Party is available on the Epic Games Store. It should be playable on most Macs back to 2012. God, Milo, we're dead. How oh, is this not hitting me before? We are in hell and we are dead. Get a grip, Lola. You were the rock. Don't make me the rock. Number seven is Life is Strange 2. It took a while for Feral Interactive to port Life is Strange 2 to Mac, but despite this, I'm super happy it's here. This release includes macOS support for all five episodes of the game. Life is Strange 2 follows the events after a tragic incident. Brothers Sean and Daniel Diaz run away from home, fearing the police. Like Max in the first game, Daniel has telekinetic power, which allows him to move objects with his mind. As Sean, you must look after Daniel's safety and will teach him right from wrong. The game looks great, has wonderful voice acting, and is just a terrific story-rich adventure game. The game is substantially more graphically advanced than the 
prior game, which means you should check the full list of supported Macs on the Steam page. No wonder your mom bailed on you. <laughs> Whoa! Sean, you hit him! Get inside now! Sean! You're dead meat, bitch! <laughs> Number six, we have Total War Three Kingdoms. This is the latest Total War game and is the first time that it's set amid the epic conflicts of ancient China in the year AD 190. Players can choose from 12 warlords and conquer the Middle Kingdom. It mixes turn-based tactics with massive real-time battles. There is also some sort of intelligence system for the characters here, and we also have an integrated campaign and battles and more advanced visuals. Total War Three Kingdoms is actually the fastest selling game in the series now. It sold one million copies in its first week. Incredible. Let's also take a moment to thank Feral Interactive for porting the game to Mac on the same day as the Windows release. Usually it takes a few months or even a year. Three Kingdoms is available on Steam and the Mac App Store. The game is supported on a range of Macs back to 2012, but please, before you buy, check the full list of supported Macs on Steam or the Mac App Store. Number 5 is Black Sad Under the Skin. Black Sad Under the Skin is a narrative game and follows a corruption scandal in New York City's underworld. Players will have to investigate, solve puzzles, go through quick time events, and use a multiple choice dialogue system. Every decision you make will have an influence on the more than 30 characters presented and the story's ending. This game was originally a comic album series in the early 2000s, and like this new game, both feature anthropomorphic animals. There are no humans. Each character is a different animal, and in my opinion, they portray different types of human personalities. I think if you like games from Telltale or Life is Strange or just decision-making titles, this is a new adventure you should give a chance. Black Sad Under the Skin is available on Steam. The game should be supported on most recent Macs. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. <laughs> Number four, we have the untitled Goose Game. This is such a classic sandbox game. It's developed by House and House and published by Panic. You play as a goose and will make your way around a town and cause all kinds of trouble. Each location has its own checklist to complete in order to progress further. This could be setting up pranks, stealing hats, honking at people, or just having a good old picnic. It's all ridiculous, but funny, and also just an enjoyment to play. The art style and even sound design is quite simple, but it works in favor for the style of the game. It means it's also approachable by children and adults, and it means the game can be supported on all Macs back to 2012. Untitled Goose Game is available on the Epic Game Store. If you're one of those people who don't like the Epic Game Store, don't worry, the game is coming to Steam, itch.io, and the Mac App Store in late 2020. Number three is Borderlands 3. One of the best FPS games released on Mac in 2019. Borderlands 3 is the latest game in the series. In fact, all previous games were brought to Mac 2. This is the first time though that it was brought to us internally by Gearbox Software instead of Aspire Media or Feral Interactive helping. The game plays like the previous ones, but you can also use new weapons and gadgets, blast through new worlds and enemies, and play as one of four new Vault Hunters. The Mac version also supports cross-platform multiplayer, so you can enjoy co-op with your friend on a Windows PC. Unfortunately, this is one of the most demanding games on Mac today. It's only supported on 27-inch iMacs or iMac Pros released since 2017, a Mac Pro 
released since 2013, or a Thunderbolt 3 Mac with an external eGPU that has 8GB of VRAM. Borderlands 3 is available to buy on the Epic Games Store. Number two, we have Grizz. Yes, this game was originally released on Steam back in December 2018. However, in August 2019, it was ported to the Mac App Store. You may remember, Apple recently awarded the developer for Grizz, Nomada Studio, the Mac App Store Game of the Year. It's an atmospheric platformer that shows a young girl dealing with a painful experience in her life. To escape from reality, she gets lost in her own mind. Her dress is also a representation of her sorrow too, and it will grant her new abilities as you explore. This can help you navigate around with more ease. Players will also see light puzzles and can go into optional skill-based challenges. The game was incredibly underrated in late 2018, but I think now it's finally starting to get the recognition it truly deserves. It should be playable on most Macs back to 2012. Number one, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. With the release of the definitive edition of Shadow of the Tomb Raider in November, Feral Interactive used this opportunity to release their port of the game to macOS. It's the best action adventure or AAA experience you can get on Mac right now. It's the final game in the series and shows Lara attempting to save the world from a Mayon apocalypse and she's becoming the Tomb Raider she is destined to be. Feral have used the latest Metal API features which are new to macOS 10.15 Catalina. Some examples are new HDR features for Mac displays and full external eGPU support. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is available on Steam and the Mac App Store. This is the definitive edition which combines the base game, all seven DLC challenge tombs and all downloadable weapons, outfits and skills. The game is supported on some Macs back to 2013, but please, before you buy, Check the full list of supported Macs on Steam. No, no one is safe! Not if he gets the box first! I have to go, I'm the only one! You're the only one that can what? You don't know that you caused all this, Laura! Not everything is about you! What Mac games have you been playing in 2019? Was it one from this list? Did I happen to miss it? Do let me know in the comments. Again, please leave a like to show your support for Mac gaming videos and subscribe and turn on notifications to be alerted about my upcoming videos. Anyway, thanks for watching.